when I was a girl growing up, mother led us in family devotions every day. She read the Bible and she prayed, and that was that. When daddy was home, he led in family devotions. He read the Bible, but he didn't just read it. My daddy would stop and make a comment, he would ask a question, and we would discuss the scriptures. So my mother taught me by her example to love reading my Bible every day. And my daddy taught me by his example to think about what I was reading. So about 10 years ago, 11 years ago, when my mother went to heaven, my daddy started asking me to read him the Bible. And at first it was very intimidating, and then it became such a joy. And there were times when I would sit in front of my daddy, he was hard of hearing, so I would sit in front of him knee to knee, and he would ask me to give him a full 60-minute message. And he never took his eyes off my face. Once in a while he would interrupt me and he would ask a question or we would discuss it. Um, but he loved to hear God's word. And then as he got weaker, we uh, went from 60 minutes to five to 10 minutes. But the pattern was always the same. Whoever was in the house was called to gather around him. And we did that whether he was in the kitchen or if he was in his study or more recently when he was in his bedroom. But the pattern was the same. People would gather around and I would read a passage of scripture. But before I did, I would explain to him why I had chosen that particular passage of scripture. Sorry. <laughs> I don't need them. Those are all Kleenexes. <laughs> Well, I may need them, actually. <laughs> but he, we would gather around, and I would explain to him why I had chosen that passage of Scripture, and then I would read the passage to him, and I would always end by saying, Daddy, I love you. So I have, want to do that this time, when we're gathered around Daddy, and I want to read a passage of Scripture, but I want to explain to you why I have chosen this particular passage of Scripture. And the reason is this, I believe from heaven's perspective that my father's death is as significant as his life. And his life was very significant. But I think when he died, that was something very um, strategic from heaven's point of view. And I know that before the foundations of the world were laid, February 21st, 2018 was the date that God chose to take my father home. Why? And I had a sweet friend who urged me to look that up on the web. So I looked up what was significant about that day. And I found out that February 21st, 2018 is the day when Jews focus on scripture reading that focuses on the death of Moses. Moses was the great liberator. He brought people, millions of people out of bondage to slavery, got them to the edge of the promised land and God took him to heaven. And then God brought Joshua to lead them into the promised land to take them home. And my father also is a great liberator. He brought millions of people out of bondage to sin, and he gets us to the edge of heaven, the edge of the promised land, and then God has called him home. And then could it be that God is going to bring Joshua to lead us into the promised land, to lead us to heaven? And do you know what the New Testament name is for Joshua? It's Jesus. And I believe this is a shot across the bow from heaven. And I believe God is saying, wake up church, wake up world, wake up Anne. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And Jesus said, when the gospel is preached to the whole world as it is today in the service, as it is through churches, missionaries, ministries, Jesus said in Matthew 24, 14, when the gospel is preached to the whole world, then the end will come. So I would like to read to you 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning with verse 13. I'm going to read it to you the way my mother taught me. I'll put my name in, make it personal. Then I'll read it to you the way my daddy taught me. I'll make a comment here or there. And it says, I do not want you to be ignorant, Anne, concerning those who have fallen asleep. And fallen asleep is just the biblical term for when God's children die. It's just a falling asleep. It's when you close your eyes to this life, you open them to the face of Jesus. It's when your faith becomes sight. So I don't want you to be ignorant, Anne, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, and I do, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord. This is God's word. It's not fantasy. It's not wish. It's not a hope so. This we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself, Joshua, Yeshua, Jesus, will descend from heaven with a shout, 
with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. That's my daddy, that's my mother, that's my husband. Then you and I who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. And this is the comfort. There is hope for tomorrow. This life is not all there is. The best is yet to come. So I want to make a pledge to my daddy. And I pledge to you, daddy, that in view of his appearing and in front of all of these witnesses, I will preach the word. I will do the work of an evangelist. I will share the gospel. And I will run my race and live my life so that five minutes before I see Jesus, I have no regrets. I will live my life to exalt and glorify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I love you, Daddy. I have followed her all.